Hey kids, still here in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. We were just at the summit of Kilauea looking at the caldera. Now we're gonna show you a different part of volcanoes. Right behind me is a lava tube. And as we venture in, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So lava tubes are formed during eruptions, of course. And when that lava is flowing downhill, the outer crust of that flow will solidify a lot quicker than the inside. Now, as that eruption keeps going, the inside of this lava tube, as the outer shell crust over, will flow through like a river almost. Now, whenever that eruption subsides, what you're left with is this hollowed out shell, like we see right here in Thurston Lava Tube. So, the Thurston Lava Tube system isn't the only system here. We have one of the longest lava tube systems in the world called Cosmora Caves. Now, if you were to take a x-ray photo of the entire Big Island, it would resemble somewhat of a beehive, just an intricate system full of these hollowed out caves. So to get a better look, just come with me for a few more steps and as we check out how deep this lava tube goes. Aloha kakahiaka, that means good morning in Hawaiian. And today we are at the site of the most recent eruption to come out of Kilauea in 2018. Now behind me is Fissure 8, one of 22 cinder cones formed during this eruption. Now out of this particular cinder cone, there's over 18,000 gallons per second being pumped out, as well as a lava fountain reaching 200 plus feet. Now, cinder cones are formed from eruptions. Now if we look at the caldera of Kilauea, Imagine that as the magma chamber, all right? Or better yet, imagine we chopped the volcano from sea level, took the top off, and looked inside. What it would resemble is somewhat of a bicycle. You have that center bolt in the center, and then off of that center bolt, you have spokes going towards the tires. Now, the caldera, where uh, on top of Kilauea is located, would be the magma chamber, right? And off of that magma chamber, you have those spokes, or what we call weak spots or rift zones. Now, if you look at the direction that these cinder cones are going, that is the eastern rift zone of Kilauea. And that weak spot, whenever that pressure and magma is released out of the magma chamber, it releases into one of those rift zones, the volcano will split apart. Due to that pressure forcing that lava up, you will have a lava fountain. Some of that lava will solidify around the edges, creating these cinder mounds. And whenever that eruption subsides, you're left with that crater at the top. And that is how these cinder cones are formed. Hello kids. Uh, today we are here on the Kona coast or the west coast of Hawaii or the big island as we previously mentioned in some of the other videos. Uh, today we're going to be talking about different lava flows. As you can see there are two um, different type of lava flows that I'm staying on. One is a more of a uh, jet black smoother flow and the one behind me here is a little bit more crumbly, jagged and more you know rusty or reddish in tint. And um, one of the main one of the ways you can tell just a general age of lava is just the color alone, okay? Not just the texture, but color. Now, the lava that we have here in Hawaii, uh, produced by the hotspot, is basalt-based lava enriched with heavy elements such as iron. So over the oxidation process, over a couple thousand years, it'll turn from this jet black to this more uh, uh, brownish or reddish color that you see here. For example, I'll just tell you the ages of these flows. You may ask yourself, how old is this flow that I'm sitting on right now? This is from 1835, as opposed to the one to my left, which is a minimum of 15,000 years old, to show you how that oxidation process takes place. Now, you may be asking yourself, you know, why the different textures? Is that erosion? You know, what is occurring here? Well, let me tell you why. Now, both these lavas consist of basalt-based rock, okay? Um, but uh, the vary in temperature, let me just break that down for you right now. Bahoy hoy, this kind of jet black smoother flow that I'm staying at, right? This jet black smoother lava flow that I'm staying on right now is a uh, much hotter flow when it is molten. Uh, it has a resting temperature of around 2000, it has a resting temperature of around 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it a lot more free flowing when it's coming downhill. But whenever it does smooth out or cool, it gives you the smoother texture to see, the ripples that you see in the outer core or the outer shell, as opposed to the uh -uh flow that we have here. Now the uh -uh flow to my left-hand side, this has a resting temperature for only 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, 
which makes it a much more viscous or sticky lava. Cools at a much more rapid rate and a little bit more gaseous. So when it's coming downhill, it's constantly cooling and crumbling over itself. Now you'll often see if you ever do come here to Hawaii, that the A'a rock is a much more light, um, um, much less dense than the Pahoehoe, okay? Uh, a lot of our lava rock here uh, resembles pumice. Uh, we call it scoria because it's not exactly pumice, but um, I wish you were here right now to uh, feel this rock to see how light it is.